Uh, it's called the remotely operated vehicle. Um, and what that means is uh, you have to operate it using uh, joysticks, um, except you use cameras. Uh, rather than looking at the robot itself while it drives around underwater, um, you use a video camera system to determine where you are, uh, and you have to complete the task. Uh, rather than uh, just uh, using it to find a rubber duck in a bathtub, <laughs> well, what practical use would this have? Uh, it's a little different. Um, they are giving us a task. Uh, we're supposed to pick up a sensor package called the OBS, uh, which has been trapped underwater by an unexpected volcano flow. And um, you collect lava samples, which are uh, weighted bags. Um, and uh, you have to take a temperature reading of a thermal vent underwater. Uh, and we do that using something called a thermistor, uh, which is a resistor that changes uh, with the temperature of the water. Uh, okay, so when that is all done, uh, eventually uh, maybe we would have something that uh, could go into the ocean. Is that true? And uh, how would that work? Uh, the idea is that um, rather than sending a human down, uh, you know, to something of un you know unbearable depth, there's a lot of pressure. You design a robot that can do it for you, um, and that's you know really good for a lot of underwater exploration where it's dangerous for a human to go down there. It's a brave new world for the visitors at San Pedro's Cabrillo Marine Aquarium as students from the California Academy of Math and Science show off their engineering skills with an entertaining and informative robot demonstration. Well, today we're showing all of our robots. Um, the CAMS Nerd Herd is actually, we build about three different robots for three competitions called ROV, FTC, and FRC. And so we're just showcasing them to show the kids in the neighborhood, and it seems like they're having lots of fun. Yeah, I think people are having fun here. Um, I see something that's uh, actually underwater. What is that? Um, this is our ROV robot. Our team competes in San Diego. This past year, actually, we got third place, which is awesome. We actually beat out MIT. Also, we two years ago, we went to Newfoundland, Canada for internationals. We meaning the whole group? Yes. Actually, not the entire Nerd Herd group, but the sub-team for ROV consists about 15 people. The robotic models on display resemble the projects which many of us may have created from the erector sets of our childhood. And the brainy students that comprise the Nerd Herd have embraced their playful moniker as a symbol of the creative vision and foresight needed to tackle some of our current global issues. Um, Nerd Herd is the CAMS Robotics team of California Academy of Math and Science. We've been around for about 10 years, a little bit less. And we compete in annual competitions for regionals such as in Los Angeles, San Diego, and Arizona. Among the robots featured is this large design that was created by a team of CAM students and was successfully deployed in an actual robot competition. Oh, we, we call it the Big Limit Tester uh, because it's maximum re uh, requirements that we have, height, weight and also it's pretty fast so it's six foot I believe right it's six foot tall yes uh -huh. and it reaches about uh, eight feet uh, in order to pass the ball on top of the overdrive. Uh, Herman you're with the uh, build team I, I guess of this group right yes. what does that mean what do you do uh, it's the build chair uh, I have to oversee all the other build teams which we have articulation which manipulates all the field objects we have the drive team which builds the chassis of the robot uh, in which you drive. We have the articulation team, I mean electrical team, which the wire on, on the robot, make sure the battery is good to go. And we have the strategy and programming team, which they uh, write all the code uh, for the robot so that if we tell it to go forward, it does what it does. And um, I'm in charge of getting all the leaders of each team together and plan what we're doing and get all the designs of the robots done by the time that we have. It sounds like you have a lot of people involved. How many? Yeah, we have around 130 people. Oh. Uh, each team, uh, the build side has about 80 people involved and uh, about 10 on each sub-team. So it really takes uh, a lot of people to get this uh, little demonstration uh, itself together today. 
Yeah, it's a lot of work, a lot of dedication, a lot of time. And every time you make a lap, you can put a ball over. And so we competed in a first robotics competition. During the afternoon demonstration, the Big Limit Tester has its limits tested numerous times. It is the same consistent performance that awarded the Robotics Club third place in the first robotics competition held recently at the University of Southern California. Uh, it was came about through the FRC first robotics competition, uh, which is a national competition organized by uh, Dean Kamen, who invented the Segway. And uh, it's part of a game um, which is introduced in January, and uh, we're given six weeks um, to design and build uh, an entire robot, which uh, is supposed to pick up this red ball and toss it over a goal. That was like the assignment? Uh, yeah, um, we were given six weeks, um, and we competed uh, along with thousands of other teams throughout the world, actually, wow. uh, which included uh, teams from Israel, uh, Mexico, um, and China. Where did this take place? Um, we competed in Arizona and uh, L.A. at the uh, L.A. Coliseum by uh, UCLA, or USC, uh -huh. sorry. Um, and uh, there's also a national competition in Atlanta, uh, which is at the Georgia Dome. There was a huge competition. Um, there were six fields set up, um, and the entire dome was filled with people. Everyone was cheering. It was really exciting, yeah. Uh, what did you put it down on paper and uh, toss ideas around as to how to actually create this monster? Okay. Uh, that's actually my job. Um, as a systems engineer, um, I work along with the other uh, team of leaders to create a design process. Um, where the entire team uh, of about 80 people uh, present ideas um, and then we do something called a design review or design analysis um, where we decide which design is best based on its good and bad points. Um, and in the end we combined a few designs and uh, came up with this one which successfully uh, picks up the ball um, and tosses it over the overpass. Uh, how high does that have to uh, toss it? Um, it uses a pneumatic system which brings it up to about six and a half feet. And then over the wall, right? Yeah, it has to go over a wall. Um, while making loops, uh, you have two minutes, and um, you have to make as many over in that time. Um, you're also competing with six other robots, so there's a lot of uh, contact. Um, you know, it, it's really a lot of driver practice. You're competing. Six at one time. <laughs> six at one time um, in one field, uh, and uh, they're all kind of roughing it up with each other. <laughs> it would be kind of nice if you know there were another one on the other side catching it. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, often the ball left and you had to go and be at it back, yeah. Though they may not look quite like the polished and streamlined robots of Hollywood science fiction sagas, the CAMS robot designs reflect the eagerness and innovation of their talented builders. With robotics such an important part of our future, and with organizations like NASA and Jet Propulsion Laboratory anxiously expanding their robotic endeavors, it is easy to see why youngsters are so engaged in this exciting new scientific frontier. Um, and it's pretty interesting. Uh, there's a lot of engineering opportunities for students. And um, as part of the robotics teams, I learned a lot of um, engineering skills, um, leadership skills as well. I've been part of the team for uh, three years now, and after this year I'll be graduating, and um, I'm, I'm glad I joined the team. It's unbelievably exciting. Um, we have access to uh, machines. Um, we just got a few new uh, CNC machines, which allow you to cut out parts um, after designing them on a program called CAD, uh, which is a 3D pro uh, drawing program. Um, so you draw whatever you want uh, using this program, and then you literally send it to the machine, and the machine will almost cut it out for you. Uh, that's how we did our uh, big robot, the FRC. So you uh, really have an exciting life here, don't you? Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, the program that we're in called uh, First Robotics, uh, we have our own team called the Nerd Herd. Um, and, Who came uh, up with that anyway? Is that a positive thought? Or? Oh, it's totally positive. We pride ourselves on being nerds, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, it's a huge team. We have 130 people and uh, it, it's actually 20% um, of the school is on the team. A lot of our students from CAMS Robotics actually have gone to prestigious schools such as Stanford, UC Berkeley, Harvard, Yale, so that's pretty awesome. So you have a lot of uh, bright students here doing a lot of very interesting things, I see. 
Definitely. We have lots of ambition for ourselves. Now, when you go home uh, after all of the schooling, I bet you continue your thoughts and, and a conversation with the family. Oh, yeah. Um, robots are often dinner table conversation, <laughs> uh, you know, trying to come up with a design or, uh, you know, a problem. It's, it's great.